Hello, Richard. It's great to see you. you. I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Absolutely fabulous, thank you. Yeah. I feel very guilty actually because I do think I've probably enjoyed lockdown a little bit too much. I've got a young family. The weather's been amazing, hasn't it? So it's just one of those where you kind of feel guilty because it's one of the things I'm really sensitive about is you know, it's very different for different people and certainly in our team and, and other businesses. It's uh, it's been a strange time, hasn't it? But I think there's yeah. going to be a lot that do come out of it. Yeah, it has. And that's what I was going to say that, you know, there has been, a, people have been able to experience positives during this period. And, and I guess that's a good thing. And I guess you're spending time with the family and, um, you know, we were talking, weren't we, about flexible working and how that, that's a, a positive that a lot of businesses and people are, becoming on coming on board with um, more agile structures to the way that people work so maybe, maybe that's another positive i think so certainly we've noticed that meetings that were very much office based or in our boardroom that kind of thing they've just kind of come to life and and, and people that maybe struggle and travel up from london and you know so it's a much bigger event it's now a much more regular occurrence i've noticed as well with my diary that i'm getting into a lot of other people's diaries and they're, they're getting more accessibility from me just because it is a Zoom call, it's fine, and yeah. you know you're not thinking about your travel time or how you're dressed or yeah. the things that you used to think about 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. So no, I, I love it, and I think that's, we've embraced it well. That's good. Oh, well, listen, we've jumped straight in without really properly introducing you, but I guess that's me just assuming that everyone knows who you are. But um, and most people probably will who are watching this. But for those that don't, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction to to you and your, and your role, obviously CEO at, at Adam? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, we're a 14-year-old business. Uh, essentially, my career, um, sound very old now, 20 years in basically marketing, digital sales, and then kind of fell into recruitment, really. Didn't, didn't plan on it in my career. Um, myself and Leon, who again, a lot of people probably know, uh, founded the business in 2006, which is around 14 years coming up for. Um, and essentially started out very much marketing, sales, commercial, went into digital as the whole market changed. And then um, in 2012, we launched Adam HR, which is essentially exactly the same, launching sort of mid, mid to senior HR recruitment, HR directors, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, my, my kind of, I guess, background has always been anything to do with people, teams, culture, um, and obviously hiring and onboarding people right across the spectrum of recruitment. Yeah, and I really wanted to get some time to talk to you today about culture within Adam and the cult, the way that you've seen culture change with the agencies that you've worked with and everything else. But just to, cause we've got to talk about the C word. I think that's the law at the moment. Um, you know, the past three months, we I can't say that. Obviously don't mean that <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> the past three months, obviously you, you've said that there's been some, um, real positives that you've been able to take out from the experience, but well, have there been challenges as well? Yeah, massive challenges. The, the biggest one being, being dead honest with you, in the first couple of weeks before the government kind of initiatives came out, you look at it and you think 95% or 90% of the people that were hiring with us are now not doing. If that's a month or two, we're fine, we're well-structured, well-run business, but if that's three, six, nine months, it starts to become a problem. So the initial challenges were literally, is that us finished, um, without being too dramatic? Wow. And then you step back from that, look at the initiatives, look at what we've got. And then the challenges are more around, let's say, agile working and, and the, using the tech that we've had. We've had the tech actually for about three years, not really used it. So it, it does make the, the, the main learn for me first is, you know, we need to adopt things quicker in the future because yeah. it's amazing when you're forced, isn't it, how good you become at adapting. Um, but I wouldn't say everything's positive. You know, we have had to furlough some staff. You know, there will sadly possibly be redundancies, but I think it's it's one of those where. We're going to come out with a stronger business. I'm very, very confident of that. Very, very confident that the clients we work with and, and the people we work with are strong businesses. So I think we're all pretty hopeful that whenever that time is, whether it's July or August, things are going to start to come back to what I can't call the new normal as no. well. I've noticed, I've noticed as well, that was a funny one because you keep mentioning that on various social media. And I was using that all the time in the first week or two. So I have stopped actually, but uh, yeah. It's um, it's going to be a very different normal. Let's just say that. Um, so when when you look ahead, then, and I think it's really good to hear that you you guys have are positioning yourselves to come out of this this whole experience stronger, and I've no, no doubt you will. But if you look towards the future, how do you think that recruitment as an industry is going to change? Um, how and we obviously we can't say new normal, but what will be different? 
Well, I think straight away that there's the obvious one, which is there was a bit of snobbery around using video technology. And I think for particularly senior hiring, um, one of my other fears was that we'd get into this and even a good business that wants to hire wouldn't do so until they could you know, meet people and make those kind of final decisions. So the first change that's already happened is we've had loads of people off the rolls, never met the, the people that they're going to work with yet. Um, well, that's probably quite normal in Silicon Valley, and it's probably pretty normal in lots of international businesses, but certainly wasn't normal for us, even to the point where we would actually not hire for a client that you know, we had, for example, we have Corelli in Italy, which is a huge company over in Europe. Um, we only did their UK stuff because we felt it was the right thing that we met everybody face to face. Yeah. yeah will, will there now be opportunities for other businesses around the world that we've turned away that really we should be working with? Yeah. Um, so I think it will now become are you better, are you the best people to hire for that business rather than are you in the right location? Um, and it's great because we've got pretty direct feedback from quite a few, particularly London-based clients, where they said, we just don't give a fuck where you're based, basically. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. one of those. Um, yeah. and, and what, about from the, what about from the, from the candidate side? So just speaking as an agency owner myself, who, who, and we are looking to kind of grow and, and hire over the next six months, <laughs> How can agencies position themselves to attract talent? I mean, previously, things were important like location and office culture and all of these things that agencies were using to differentiate themselves. Are you seeing a difference in the priorities that candidates have? Um, I don't know if the priorities have actually changed or whether it's just now become more obvious what those priorities are. Um, the world of HR um, has been saying for a long time that it's not about ball pits, it's not about pool tables, and it's not about that perceived great company to work for. It's about genuinely great reward, great recognition, a real team culture, that sort of thing. So it's how businesses can build that, whether the people are remote workers or office based, uh, I believe will be where it's going to go very, very quickly. In fact, yeah. it's gone there already. Yeah. How, what, what about Adam then? How are you guys? how do you kind of create your culture and i know that as an you know we we work work with you and, and have recognized that you you really do have a fantastic company culture and the way that you work with your clients like like ourselves is really energetic and positive and dynamic and agile and all of these things how do you plan to keep that culture really coherent you know if if people are going to be working more agile or working from home or or how important do you think that company culture is going to continue to be for you guys that's massive and i think it'll become more important i think the engagement and touch points for people will become easier because i'll be able to you know, for example yeah seeing me more often I, you know i'm in a lot more meetings now than i used to be because i don't have travel time um i can make much more more effort with that um the training and development that we do we use external consultants that sort of thing you know, that kind of work can be done a lot more frequently because you can do it in this sort of setting um, but I just think the right use of technology means that people don't waste time. Um, you're not kind of present in every meeting. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar, I was chatting to, um, I think you probably know John Woodall at Space 48, yeah. so I acknowledge him uh, because you know, he was talking about asynchronous communication and the principle that you don't hold a meeting and everybody has to be there. They can kind yeah. of absorb some of the comms at the right time. I think that's something that we're still working on, to be honest with you. But as soon as you, know, you realise those opportunities are out there, just so much more productive for everybody to use their own time. Yeah. You know, make an announcement to the team. I don't have to do it at four o'clock on a Friday just because that's when we have a beer in our hand. I can do it at the right time for that particular message. Yeah. And the right time for different people because four o'clock on a Friday isn't great for everybody. You know, exactly. and enforcing that. Great that, for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think it's empowering your, your team, isn't it, as well, to be able to make the decisions about how to work best for themselves. And I know just personally, I, I, I do feel like I've been able to be really productive during this period as, as one of the positives that's come out of it. Um, but still being able to give just as much to my team and my clients, or if not more time than I would have been able to in the past, because I just feel that all the inefficiencies have been moved away. The irrelevant meetings have been wiped away. Um, everything is far more focused when we're having conversations. And, yeah, that can actually be quite draining because you're really in it all the time when you're in, within this kind of living within this screen. But in terms of efficiency and productivity, I, I feel like I've managed to get a lot done in the past three months that possibly would have taken a lot longer. 
completely agree. And I think that intensity is a good point because I don't actually think it can continue that people do 10 hours a day on Zoom. No. Um, not everybody's doing that, but you're right. The, the meetings are so much more productive and engaging that it's great. But I do think one of the work ons we're going to have to look at is, is how you get um, the meetings that do need a lot of people and how, how you get them planned well. So it's considerate for everybody's working day and those yeah. that are out of that we, sort of thing. I've so, not tried to do any really large, I've not tried to do any workshops, for example, as yet. Although I know that, you know, I've spoken to people who have and they've been able to find the right digital tools to enable them to manage those effectively and so it's all out there but i've not managed i've not done that yet i've not run a, a seminar or webinar yet and those things are the next challenges i think um, i have pitched over zoom um successfully so that was good that was an experience that i didn't think i would have to have to handle with my dog on my knee because he was demanding attention but there's a first rubber thing and it seemed to work um so yeah just just thinking then about um the recruitment industry and I guess from my perspective just coming from an agency uh, creative agency perspective one thing that I've really seen and I don't know if you've seen this too I'm sure you have is how people have, have come together and I almost had the confidence to to communicate and collaborate more than they would have done and I think I certainly have um, reached out to a lot more people that I possibly would have maybe not have had the confidence to do or would have felt that we'd need to set up a big formal meeting in order to meet and all, on all of that. And I don't know, is that something that you've experienced as well, where people have been come, yeah. likely to come together? Hugely so. I think uh, it's breaking down a lot of barriers, hasn't it? So like you say, a meeting that might be a lot of travel time or, or maybe even seem a bit weird because you don't know that person that well, is perfectly safe and normal in this environment, isn't it? So anything where I've had a lot of help from people that mentor me, I've gone and made sure I pass that on to all of my network quickly. Um, and I think the spirit of realizing that actually you can spread information and learning very very quickly and particularly because there's been a lot of learning for business owners hasn't there for mm. lots of reasons financially over the last couple of months um so i agree completely i, I just think on, a, on my personal level I, i'm probably going to save 10 to 12 hours a week conservatively on travel time possibly more so it just stands to reason that it's a bit more time for the family a lot more time for more productive meetings and a lot more time for people basically so i think yeah, I can only see positives off from that perspective. <laughs> yeah, that's good. This is a really nice positive conversation for a Tuesday morning. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Although I do think that people will miss the pubs and, and the fact that a meeting used to be at four o'clock and finish and then you go to the pub after in the normal yeah. course. But I think, yeah, that, that's going to come back at some point. So that'll... Uh, yeah, there is that. I think that that's one of the things that have, that have died out for me, the um, kind of Zoom drinks where you kind of just sat alone in your house drinking to a computer screen is a bit weird <laughs> and that's died off a little bit but but right. that's not to say I think it will disappear altogether because it's also enabled me to connect with friends and family that you know normally I presume I can't see them because I can't see them face to face so um, that's also been, been a positive. Massive um, and I think as well that things that would have been a call previously so it works both ways obviously but yeah there's, there's definitely family I've checked in like this that actually I would have just been lazy and just picked up the mobile uh, but there are also meetings where somebody wants a Zoom call and it's like, actually, can we just have a five minute mobile? <laughs> One question, you know. Email me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although I hate email, that's, that's, that's a whole worse. conversation. If you think the new normal's bad, wait till I start talking about email. <laughs> <clears throat> so listen, the, let's think big picture and, and visionary stuff because um, it, it's, it's great that there's been all these learning points, but how are you going to carry all this forward have you changed the vision for adam have you looked out at the sector or within you know within your across your client base and thought we've got to change our vision we've got to change direction what's what's happening for you guys in, in the next kind of six 12 months can you even so, think that much being, yeah being completely honest the, the vision short term is to protect all the staff survive and come out of this a stronger business than we are we've, we've massively made the very much um, strong lean business pre-COVID. So um, that is that is our short term. But if you want big visionary stuff, I think it's got to be a completely new um, set of products and services, which we're working on. Um, it's got to be new markets, such as international. We can absolutely go after international markets that we wouldn't have done previously. Um, you know, we were talking earlier, and I think that the fact that we pride ourselves in meeting everybody and the, and the absolute 
you know, that is where a lot of the added value is in either persuading somebody to come work for this they maybe haven't heard of before or finding somebody that, that somebody else can't find. Um, that just goes to a different level. It does bring in more competition, but I, that's not something that worries me at all. Um, and then the vision beyond that is there's, there's going to be a lot of other things that people have looked at their own business and we've done it. And you know, a lot of people have said for 20 years, you know, recruitment's going to die and it's going to be replaced by this tech or that tech or people bring it in house. They're all true and it has developed a lot, but I just think this will be the, fa the fastest development I've seen in my career in this sector will be this next year that's coming up. Just because businesses are looking at themselves and thinking, we know we can make brave decisions now, because it's very unlikely you're going to have to be as brave as we were just in the last two or three months, and, and arguably the next three months as well. So for example, for us, quite a big fan of Dan Priestley, looking at, he sat on a mountain of data, um, and unsubscribed, and, um, oh sorry, oversubscribed, I should say. And I think you look at that and you think, we're all in that, we're all guilty of that. We've all got great businesses which are maybe selling or, or working in one market that actually lends itself far better for something different. And without using words like pivot, I think lots of people will do that. Mm. And, and that's certainly our plan. That's really good to hear and really interesting to chat to you about that this morning and have so much kind of positive to come from all of this and for the future too. So. Thanks so much, Richard, for chatting with me this morning. Um, and we'll catch up soon in the real world, yeah. maybe. Yeah, I've enjoyed speaking to you again. And uh, yeah, really appreciate your time as well. Thanks, Richard. Speak soon. That's great.